Playing with Power MTG. Powerful cards, powerful formats. Before we get into tonight's game, I wanted to ask a question. Do you have extra cards lying around that you don't use? Want to buy or trade for some extra cards but don't know how to maximize the value? Then you should try out today's sponsor, Card Conduit. Card Conduit is the best service when it comes to selling your extra cards. Don't waste hours trying to find the best buy list price for your cards online. Simply send them to Card Conduit and let them take care of the rest. I have used Card Conduit multiple times already. I always use them to get the best value for my extra cards. I get fair prices for my cards and they save me tons of time. They have three main services. Their standard service lets you send them your unsorted cards of any value. They will sort, grade, and give you the best price for your cards. Their curated service is similar. Send them your unsorted cards worth over a dollar in value. They will charge half the fee of the standard service and charge no fee per card. Their sorted service is a great value as well. Choose cards in advance with their selection tool, send them sorted to Card Conduit, and they will grade and buy list them automatically. Save yourself the time of having to send to multiple sites and let Card Conduit do it instead. Their fee is only 2% with no fee per card. They give you the best price for your cards. They work with competitive buy listing partners, including ones not open to the public. Users get an average of 19% more for their collection than they would from any major retail buy list, even with Card Conduit's fees. Card Conduit also optimizes buy listing for card condition as well. Since vendors have different penalties for wear and tear, Card Conduit will find the best buy list priced against the specific condition of the card. So give Card Conduit a try today. If you sign up with my link in the description below or use the promo code POWER, you will also get 10% off of their fees when you use their service. A big thanks to Card Conduit for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Zed, Pouting Lotho, Corrupt Sheriff. This Aristocrats deck seeks to assemble one of its infinite combos, such as Gravecrawler and Phyrexian Altar, to drain the table and win the game. Zeb's opening hand contains a Swords to Plowshares, Dance of the Dead, Reprieve, Blind Obedience, LSL Core Sadistic Pilgrim, Scrubland, and a Swamp. Next, we have Hank, piloting the Locust God. This Is It deck looks to draw a lot of cards and kill the table with a swarm of insects. His opening hand contains an Island, Arid Mesa, Whirlpool Warrior, Skull Clamp, Lightning Greaves, Rapid Hybridization, and a Deflecting Swat. After that, we have Sean, piloting Borborygmos and Fibblethip. This is a Teamer Breach deck that uses its commander to gain card advantage and control the table. Sean's opening hand contains an Arcane Signet, Mana Crypt, Mana Vault, Chain of Vapor, Fierce Guardianship, Noxious Revival, and a Polluted Delta. Finally, we have Thomas, piloting Slimefoot and Squee. This deck seeks to create a mountain of death triggers along with some graveyard shenanigans to win the game. His opening hand contains Smelt, Artifact Mutation, Skull Clamp, Arcane Signet, and Three Forests. Without further ado, let's kick off his impending impeccable impervious impossibility. Hank correctly entered the Konami code and gets to start us off. Hank draws a card for turn and plays an Arid Mesa. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. He casts a Skull Clamp and passes the turn. Sean draws and plays a Polluted Delta. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts an Arcane Signet. He gives the turn to Thomas. Thomas draws and plays a Forest. He also casts a Skull Clamp and ships the turn. Zeb draws, plays a Scrubland, and ends his turn. Hank draws and plays an Island. He casts Lightning Greaves. He passes. At the end of Hank's turn, Sean pays two life to cast Noxious Revival, returning Polluted Delta to the top of his library. During his upkeep, Sean loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and plays his Polluted Delta again. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Tropical Island onto the battlefield. He casts his commander, Borborygmos and Fibblethip. It enters, Sean draws, and does not discard. He ships the turn to Thomas. Thomas draws and plays a Darigaz's Caldera. Caldera enters, and in response, Thomas taps a Forest, then bounces Forest to his hand. He casts Arcane Signet. He passes the turn to Zeb. Zeb draws and plays a Swamp. He casts his commander, Lotho, Corrupt Sheriff. He gives the turn to Hank. Hank draws, takes no actions, and passes. During his upkeep, Sean loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and exiles Elvish Spirit Guide from his hand, adding a green. He casts a Mana Vault. He pays two life to help cast Birthing Pod. Lotho triggers, Zeb loses a life, and creates a treasure. In response, Zeb casts Swords to Plowshares, targeting Borborygmos and Fibblethip. In response, Sean casts Fierce Guardianship for its alternate cost, targeting Swords. In response, Hank casts Rapid Hybridization, targeting Borborygmos and Fibblethip. In response, Sean casts Dispel, targeting Hybridization. With no other actions, Dispel counters Rapid, Fierce counters Swords, and Birthing Pod resolves. Next, Sean casts Chain of Vapor, targeting Mana Vault. In response, Thomas casts Smelt, targeting Sean's Dreams, I, I mean Birthing Pod. Sean's opponents do a round of high fives, and Birthing Pod is destroyed. Then Chain of Vapor resolves, Mana Vault bounces, and Sean stops the chain. He recasts Mana Vault. He moves to combat and attacks Zeb with Borborygmos and Fibbletip. It triggers, Sean draws, and does not discard. Zeb takes a hit, and in his second main phase, Sean plays a Waterlog Grove. All through, Sean ships the turn. 
Thomas draws and plays a forest. He casts his commander, Slimefoot and Squee. Slimefoot and Squee enter, and Thomas creates a 1-1 Sapperling. He passes the turn to Zeb. Zeb draws and plays a Flooded Strand. He casts Blind Obedience. He cracks his Flooded Strand, pays a life, and fetches up a Godly Shrine onto the battlefield untapped, paying 2 life. He ends his turn. Hank draws and plays a Forbidden Orchard. He taps Forbidden Orchard, giving Chon a 1-1 Spirit to help cast Whirlpool Warrior. Whirlpool Warrior enters, and Hank shuffles 4 cards from his hand into his library, then draws 4. He equips Lightning Greaves onto the Warrior, and passes the turn. During his upkeep, Sean loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He draws and moves to combat. He attacks Zeb with Borborygmos and Fibblethip. It triggers, Sean draws a card, then discards Steam Vents, killing the Sapperling. Zeb takes the hit, and in his second main phase, Sean casts Dockside Extortionist. Dockside enters, and Sean creates 10 tapped treasures through Blind Obedience. He ships the turn to Thomas. Thomas draws and plays a forest. He casts Professional Facebreaker. He moves to combat and attacks Zeb with Slimefoot and Squee. Slimefoot and Squee triggers, creating a tapped 1 1 Sapperling. Zeb takes it, Facebreaker triggers, creating a tapped treasure. In his second main phase, he equips Skull Clamp onto his Sapperling, killing it. Skull Clamp triggers, and Thomas draws two cards. He gives the turn to Zeb. Zeb draws, takes no actions, and passes the turn. Hank draws and plays an Islet. He activates Whirlpool Warrior. He holds priority and flashes in a Fairy Mastermind. In response, Zeb casts Reprieve, bouncing Mastermind to Hank's hand and drawing a card. Then Whirlpool's ability resolves and each player shuffles their hand into their library and draws that many cards. Hank casts Lotus Petal. Lotho triggers and Zeb loses a life and creates a treasure. All through, Hank ships the turn. During his upkeep, Sean loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He draws and moves to combat. He attacks Zeb with Borborygmos and Fibbletip. It triggers, Sean draws and doesn't discard. Zeb takes the hit, and in his second main phase, Sean casts Alchemist Retrieval, returning his Borborygmos and Fibblethip to his hand. He recasts his commander. It enters, Sean draws, and does not discard. He plays a Scalding Tarn. With nothing else, he gives the turn to Thomas. Thomas draws and moves to combat. He attacks Zeb with Professional Facebreaker and Hank with Slimefoot and Squee. Slimefoot and Squee triggers, and Thomas creates a Tap Sapperling token. Zeb and Hank both take the hit, Facebreaker triggers, and Thomas creates two Tap Treasures. In his second main phase, he sacrifices a treasure to activate Professional Facebreaker, exiling a Twilight Mire off of the top of his library. He plays Twilight Mire from Exile. He sacrifices another treasure to activate Facebreaker, exiling Abrupt Decay off of the top. He casts Abrupt Decay from Exile, destroying Blind Obedience. Thomas casts Dockside Extortionist. Lotho triggers, and Zeb loses a life and creates a treasure. In response, Sean sacrifices all of his treasures. Dockside enters, and Thomas creates 10 treasures. He casts Unmarked Grave, fetching up a Viscera Seer into his graveyard. He casts Forever Young, putting Viscera Seer onto the top of his library, then drawing a card. He casts Viscera Seer. In response, Sean casts March of Swirling Mist, where X equals 4, targeting Slimefoot and Squee, Professional Facebreaker, Dockside Extortionist, and the Sapperling. In response, Thomas sacrifices a treasure to activate Facebreaker, exiling Judith the Scourge Diva off of the top of his library. Then March resolves, phasing out all of the creatures. Then Viscera Seer resolves. Next, Thomas casts Shenanigans, destroying the Lightning Greaves. He casts Judith the Scourge Diva from exile. All through, Thomas passes. Zeb draws and plays a Phyrexian Tower. He casts a Mox Opal. He casts the One Ring. Lotho triggers, Zeb loses a life, and creates a treasure. The One Ring enters, and Zeb gains protection from everything until his next turn. He casts Lurus of the Dream Den. He casts Blind Obedience from his graveyard through Lurus. The table groans, and Zeb passes to Hank. Hank draws and casts Dockside Extortionist. Dockside enters, and in response, Thomas sacrifices a treasure, then Hank creates eight tapped treasures. Hank passes the turn. At the end of Hank's turn, Sean cracks the Scalding Tarn, pays a life, and fetches up a Stomping Grounds onto the battlefield tapped. During his upkeep, Sean wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and moves to combat. He attacks Hank with Borborygmos and Fibblethip. It triggers, Sean draws a card and discards Gemstone Mine, targeting Viscera Seer. In response, Thomas activates Viscera Seer, sacrificing itself. Judith the Scourge Diva triggers, dealing 1 damage to Lotho Corrupt Sheriff, killing it. Zeb then sends it to the graveyard. Then Thomas scribes 1, leaving it on top. Then Hank takes the hit, and in his second main phase, Sean sacrifices Waterlog Grove to draw a card. He pays 2 life to help cast Phyrexian Metamorph. In response, Hank casts Remand, returning Metamorph to Sean's hand, and Hank draws a card. Sean then pays 2 life to help recast Phyrexian Metamorph. Metamorph enters tapped as a copy of the One Ring, and Sean gains protection from everything until his next turn. Looking good with protection, he ends his turn. Before his untap, Thomas's creatures phase back in. He draws and equips Skull Clamp to a Sapperling, killing it. Skull Clamp triggers, and Thomas draws 2 cards. He plays a Verdant Catacombs. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Stomping Grounds onto the battlefield untapped, paying 2 life. He boosts to combat and attacks Hank with Professional Facebreaker and Slimefoot and Squee. Slimefoot and Squee triggers, and Thomas creates a Sapperling. Hank takes it, Facebreaker triggers, and Thomas creates a Tapped Treasure. In his second main phase, Thomas casts Village Rites, sacrificing Slimefoot and Squee as an additional cost. Judith the Scourge Diva triggers, and Hank takes the damage. Then Village Rites resolves, and Thomas draws 2 cards. He sacrifices a treasure to activate Facebreaker, exiling Assassin's Trophy off of the top of his library. He casts Assassin's Trophy from Exile, destroying Hank's Skull Clamp. Then Hank fetches up a mountain onto the battlefield. With nothing else, Thomas passes the turn. 
At the end of Thomas's turn, Zeb activates the One Ring. In response, Thomas casts Terminate, destroying Zeb's Lurus of the Dream Den. Then Zeb adds a Burn Encounter to the One Ring, draws a card, and moves to his turn. During his upkeep, Zeb loses his life through the One Ring. He draws and activates the One Ring, adding a Burn Encounter and drawing two cards. He plays a Silent Clearing for turn. He casts Animate Dead, returning Lotho, Corrupt Shira from his graveyard to the battlefield. He casts a Skull Clamp. Lotho triggers, Zeb loses the life and creates a treasure. He casts Zula Port Cutthroat. He gives the turn to Hank. Hank draws and pays two life to cast Jataxian Probe. He looks at Thomas's hand and draws a card. He casts his commander, the Locust God. Lotho triggers, Zeb loses a life and creates a treasure. Hank casts Shared Animosity. He casts Teferi's Puzzle Box. He ships the turn. During his upkeep, Sean wins his Mana Crypt roll. During his draw step, he takes a damage through his Mana Vault. Teferi's Puzzle Box triggers, and Sean puts the cards into his hand onto the bottom of his library and then draws that many cards. He moves to combat and attacks Zeb with Borborygmos and Fibblethip. It triggers, Sean draws, and doesn't discard. Not wanting to die to commander damage, Zeb blocks with Lotho. Lotho dies and is sent to the graveyard again. Zulaport Cutthroat triggers, Zeb gains a life, and his opponents lose a life. In his second main phase, Sean casts Lanowar Elves. He casts Elvish Mystic. He passes the turn to Thomas. During his draw step, Thomas puts his hand onto the bottom of his library and draws that many cards through Puzzle Box. He replaces one of the draws by dredging shenanigans from his graveyard to his hand. In his main phase, he plays a Mountain. He moves the combat and attacks Zeb with Professional Facebreaker, Dockside Extortionist, and Judith the Scourge Diva. Zeb blocks Judith with Zulaport. Before damage, Zeb activates Phyrexian Tower, sacrificing Zulaport, adding two black. Zulaport triggers, Zeb gains a life, and the table loses one. Still in response, Zeb sacrifices his Silent Clearing and draws a card. Then Zeb flashes in Orcish Bowmasters. Bowmaster enters, dealing one damage to the Sapper token and then Zeb amasses Orcs 1. Then Zeb takes the remaining damage. Facebreaker triggers and Thomas creates a tapped treasure. In his second main phase, Thomas sacrifices a treasure to activate Facebreaker, exiling Swiftfoot Boots off of the top of his library. He casts Reckless Handling. He fetches up a Phyrexian Altar into his hand and then randomly discards an Ancient Tomb. He casts Phyrexian Altar. He equips Skull Clamp onto his Dockside. He activates Phyrexian Altar, sacrificing Dockside, adding a red. Skull Clamp and Judith the Scourge Diva trigger. Judith deals one damage to Orcus Bowmasters, and Thomas draws two through Skull Clamp. Next, he casts Shenanigans, destroying Teferi's Puzzle Box. With his Shenanigans done, he gives the turn to Zeb. During his upkeep, Zeb loses two life through the One Ring. He draws and activates the One Ring. He adds a Burden Counter and draws three cards. He casts Mox Diamond, discarding Command Tower. He casts Viscera Seer. He activates Viscera Seer, sacrificing the Orc Army. He scries one, then activates Viscera Seer again, sacrificing itself, scrying one again. He casts Agadim's Awakening, where X equals two, returning Viscera Seer and Orcish Bowmasters to the battlefield. Bowmasters trigger, dealing one damage to the Lanowar Elves, killing it, and Zeb amasses one. He ships the turn. During his draw step, Hank's Locust God triggers and he creates a tapped insect. He moves to combat and attacks Zeb with the Locust God. Zeb takes it all and dies. Hank passes the turn. During his upkeep, Sean loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. Then he loses a life through the One Ring. He draws for turn and activates the One Ring. He adds a Burn Encounter and draws 2 cards. He casts Neoform, sacrificing Borborygmos and Fibblethip as an additional cost. In response, Hank casts Counterspell, targeting Neoform. In response, Sean hard casts Force of Will, countering Counterspell. Then Neoform resolves, and Sean fetches up a Deadeye Navigator onto the battlefield. Deadeye enters and soul bonds with Dockside Extortionist. Sean gives the turn to Thomas. Thomas draws and plays a Swamp. He casts Thrill of Possibility, discarding a card as an additional cost, then drawing two. He casts Impact Trimmers. He casts Zulaport Cutthroat. Cutthroat enters, Impact Trimmers triggers, dealing one damage to each opponent. Thomas casts Jury, Master of the Review. Jury enters, Trimmers triggers, and each opponent takes one. He moves to combat and attacks Hank with Professional Facebreaker and Judith the Scourge Diva. Hank blocks Judith with Dockside and takes the rest. Facebreaker triggers and Thomas creates a treasure. He passes the turn. During his draw step, Hank's Locust God triggers and he creates another insect. In his main phase, he casts Winds of Change. The table shuffles their hand into their library and draws that many. The Locust God triggers and Hank creates an insect. He moves to combat and attacks Sean with the Locust God and one insect and Thomas with two insects. Shared Animosity triggers and each insect gets plus two plus oh. They both take a hit and Sean dies. Hank ships the turn to Thomas. Thomas draws and moves to combat. He attacks Hank with everything. Hank takes it, Facebreaker triggers, and Thomas creates a treasure. In his second main phase, Thomas sacrifices a treasure to activate Facebreaker. Jury triggers and gets a 1-1 counter. Then Thomas exiles a mountain off of the top of his library. He sacrifices another treasure to activate Facebreaker again. Jury triggers and gets another counter, and then Thomas exiles a Shieldred Whispering One off of the top of his library. He activates Phyrexian Altar, sacrificing Professional Facebreaker, adding a red. Cutthroat, Judith, and Jury trigger. Jury gains another counter, Judith deals one damage to Hank, and then Thomas gains a life and Hank loses a life through Cutthroat. Thomas activates Phyrexian Altar again, sacrificing Jury of the Master Review, adding a red. Cutthroat, Judith, and Jury trigger. Hank takes five from Jury, takes one from Judith, then takes one from Cutthroat, killing him, and Thomas wins the game.
Ladies and gentlemen, what a game. Congrats to Thomas on his win. This was a hard fought game with multiple removal and counter spells being tossed around. Hank was wheeling and dealing. Zeb had Borborygmos and Fibblethip punching him in the face. Sean wasn't allowed to have a birthing pod. And all the while, Thomas was accruing his value pieces. Thomas assembled all of the greatest hits of Rakdos attackers and closed out the game in style. The most valuable card in tonight's game, sponsored by Luxury Playstyle, goes to Professional Facebreaker. This card is a great value engine. It creates treasures through combat, then lets you use those treasures or others to gain card advantage. Did we mention it also has Menace? Tonight this Breaker of Faces helped Thomas punch his way into victory. Well that about wraps it up for this episode. Tune in next time when we duke it out to see who will be king of the competitive EDH table. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.